Hi, I'm Mark Cage and I'm running for Sheriff of Eddy County. I would appreciate your vote November 8th to continue to serve you, the great citizens of Eddy County. Eddy County is a great place to live and I want to help keep it that way. The second item that came across through my campaign, talking with citizens, and well, actually even before the campaign came, came about, uh, was ranching and cattle issues. And we've, we need to do a better job at the sheriff's office in interacting with our ranchers and providing them a service that they deserve. The sheriff's office in the very, back in the territorial days, Sheriff's Office was created because of cattle concerns, because of ranching concerns, to protect the ranchers and stop cattle rustling, basically. This is a, those are our roots in the Sheriff's Office, and I've started realizing by talking to some of the ranchers that there's a lot of things we can do better. We, I'm very proud to, to say that I've been, uh, had a small part in helping the, the Eddy County Cattle Growers Association to, to start becoming active again. And more members, they're growing every day. I'm, become, I'm an associate member. I'm not a rancher, I'm, I'm a law enforcement officer. But I am involved and I want to be involved. We have had, a, we had a, our first meeting uh, was at the Sheriff's Office with, with the ranchers, with several ranchers. It moved on to more meetings with the Eddy County Cattle Growers Association, and we have, at the Sheriff's Office, have been a part of all those meetings. We're very interested in furthering our efforts to enforce laws in, 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 in Eddy County as far as the ranchers go. You know, there's a statement that's very offensive to ranchers, and I've heard it several times, is, well, it's just a cow, what does it matter? It's just one cow. Well, that one cow can add up. And Sandy Wilkie uh, did, actually did the numbers, put the numbers to it, and came up with, and it's over a five or six year period, one single cow being killed, losing one single cow, say it's run over on the side, or it's shot by somebody who just has a, a sick sense of humor and decides they want to kill an animal, that, that cow can amount to $30,000 over that time frame. Now, I don't know about you, but I really can't afford to lose $30,000. And we have some smaller ranchers here that that could be devastating to them, just losing that one or, two, one or two cows for that. We've had a rash over, not I know rash is a bad word to use. We've had several cows killed in what they're calling joy killings, where the, the cows are being shot for no reason and, and left to die. Um, one rancher even told me that maybe if, if they had taken some meat off of the animal, they would have felt a little better about it because that would have been a reason, you know, they're feeding their family. But there have been several cows killed in Eddy County that were just shot, nothing else done, and the animal left there to be found later rotting. Uh, it's deplorable, and uh, it's a sick human being that would do that. We have over $5,000 out in reward money for the, the any information leading to the arrest and conviction of anybody that is involved in these cattle killings. So please, if you have information, come forward. We will eventually catch who's doing this. It's going to take us some time. It may take us a little more time than we want, but we're going to catch them. Now, we run into different problems with ranching, and it's all, it all comes down to education um, as to how we're going to enforce it, how you and the community can help out. Uh, how the oil and gas industry can help out with these problems. Say, uh, when fences. Here in New Mexico, we have a lot of BLM land and Bureau of Land Management. And that land is, it, it's public access because it is government land. However, that land is also being ranched. And, there, and ranchers utilize fences to keep their cattle in. They don't want their cattle getting out and, and, and going and getting run over or whatever. They also don't want other people's animals intermingling with their animals. Now, there have been a lot of fences cut. And fences are expensive, very expensive endeavors for ranchers. One mile of fence can cost $11,000. 
I think actually up to 15,000, but I know at least $11,000. That's expensive. So when you cut that fence, well, you can just put it back together, right? Just, well, no, because you have tension poles. You have to go all the way out, and those are usually about a quarter mile apart. So you've got to fix a whole quarter mile of fence just because of one cut in the fence. Now, what if that fence is left down and a rancher doesn't know about it? Well, if they've got a pasture with, say, 50 cows in that pasture, they're going to have probably about three bulls in there also. Well, what if another bull comes in? Somebody else's bull. Well, okay, so they get to, to breed for free with somebody else's animal, right? That's a good deal. Well, it's not a good deal because we have in, in a disease here called trick. And what it is, it's basically a, a venereal disease for cows. And when cows get together in breeding season, they're gonna breed indiscriminately with whatever's there to breed with. So if an infected cow comes in, and, and from what I'm told, we have the highest incidence of trick in Eddy County in, in the state. So there's a good possibility that if a stray bull comes into your pasture, it's gonna have trick. So if it gets in there and breeds with your cattle, and then your cattle breed with your bulls, everybody's gonna have it. Now, once that happens, if a cow is, is, has, a, has a calf, has a baby inside of her, she's gonna probably abort that baby. That's what the, the disease causes. And then it's gonna take about 90 days for that cow to get clean again and then be able to breed her again. So you've set yourself back for three months already. What happens to the bulls, your clean bulls, that you paid, say, three to $5,000 for. If that bull breeds with an infected female, that bull's gonna get infected, and guess what? You can't get rid of it in the bull. The bull's done, it's over. And it'll have to be sold for slaughter, which is about a little less than a dollar a pound. So if you've got a 1,500 to 1,800 pound bull that you paid $5,000 for, you can do the math. You're losing a couple of grand right there. Then what happens after that? You have to replace that bull for another $5,000. So now you're out seven grand and you're back to where you started and you have to hope someone doesn't cut your fence again and let an infected bull come in or an infected cow come into your, your pasture. Over the course of that year, there's so many things that have to be done. You have to bring, have to bring in a team of people to help get, get the infection down. You have to have the bull slaughtered. You have to get, another, you have to get other bulls. There's so much that goes on, it amounts to an enormous amount of money. And in that one year, it can amount to over $35,000. You take that out to losses the next year because of the calves that you lost, it, that you lost it goes up to almost $50,000. So when people say it's just a cow or it's just a fence, I'm just cutting the fence, there, there are price tags attached to that, huge price tags. And that's something we have to be aware of. And that's something we have to, to educate ourselves on. And that's something where we need to bring people together. We need to bring the oil and gas people who are out doing the work, the landmen and, and all the, 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 the people building the lines. And we need to bring the ranchers into so we can explain to them what's going on. Explain, say, hey, when you cut that fence, that's fine. You just need to make sure that we know about it so you can get it fixed. Talk to the landowner or excuse me, talk to the, the rancher who is there with the cattle. Now, when it comes right down to it, that land is public access land. That fence is not. That fence is property. And there's a specific statute for that in New Mexico statutes. And cutting a fence is a misdemeanor. It is a crime, punishable by a fine and punishable by time in jail. If you look back to the territorial laws, which are still in effect, it can be a fourth degree felony. So cutting a fence is serious business, not just for the rancher, but it can be for the individual cutting it as well. So we need to all help get educated. We need to form these partnerships, get people together, talk about it, and we can, we can all work together to affect this problem in a positive manner.